What is up, everybody? Glad to be back with you on this Friday update of the Jasmine Weekly Update. I've got an action-packed episode for you today, tons of things to cover in today's feed. So I'm going to try to get into absolutely as much of it as possible. Uh, should be a action-packed hour of just about anything you can think of Jasmine from new breaking news, let's put it that way, uh, all the way uh, delving into some old stuff, putting it together in new ways that maybe we haven't seen before. So lot to cover. Now, first of all, we got this post here by Neo Extrix. If you're on uh, crypto Twitter and you're not following him and you follow Jasmine, I recommend giving him a follow. He's been putting out a lot of great content this past week, uh, short video clips, uh, various images. Uh, he's kind of tying things together from the past in ways that, um, uh, in a simplified way, I would say that maybe we haven't done before. So really cool to see all that content coming out of him. Keep it up. And as you can see here, we have the technology on display in this former video from Sony. So right here, we've got a locked door. It's locked with a deadbolt. To the left, we have the uh, screener, essentially, and the reader, right? So what this does here is you just have to put your ID up top and then your finger down below and the door should unlock. Now notice here that the guy in the video uses a Sony ID. He scans his ID, it knows it's him, then he puts his finger on there, the door fully unlocks, and that's the exact technology that Jasmine can be using in a range of implications along with the PDL throughout Japan. And where, where we could go with this across Jasmine, I'm going to get into in a minute, but uh, you know, some ideas kind of percolated out of nowhere on last week's call, and, and I'll be talking about that uh, shortly. All right. So scrolling up uh, from there, uh, this is interesting as well. Another post by Neo Extrix saying the intention of Kunitaki Ando, the chairman of Jasmine, is clear and very ambitious to make Ladder uh, the brand after Sony. At least I think he hopes so, right? So he says, uh, you know, Jasmine is expected to have 2,000 to 3,000 companies join it within a few years. Uh, the charismatic people of Sony rebuilding a global company, uh, uh, the step forward to become a global company from Japan. Uh, a lot of what Ando does is very uh, Japan-centric, right? He wants Japan to be become a world leader. Ando's 80 years old, right? He doesn't need the money. He's already been the CEO of Sony. So why is he doing it? We've talked about this before. It's about legacy. And so it says here, Mr. Ando, who's leading this project, former president of Sony Corporation, founder of Life, uh, which has capital of 70 billion yen, the amount of individual insurance contracts, 30 trillion yen, 2007, and charismatic manager, uh, it's safe to say, right? So a little highlight there on Ando. Moving up from there, uh, I wanted to highlight this post. This was another really good one that Neo Extrix found. Uh, it was a video, basically. Uh, so what this is, let me show you here. I said, uh, this is fascinating. Satoshi Amagi, uh, CEO of Mofiria, is talking in 2017 about biometric vein authentication technology. Two major insights. Number one. What he says here, and this is kind of covers, I think there was like maybe three or four video clips that Neo Extrix posted. Uh, number one, that 80% of the ATMs at major Japanese banks use vein authentication technology. That was in 2017. So roughly, you know, six going on seven years ago, 80% of them already did this. I didn't realize it was that widespread, right? Which goes back to Jasmine. Now, being a partner with Mofirio, offering the PDL, a.k.a. the backbone, right, uh, a, a technology that's very widespread um, in Japan throughout the financial world. Okay, so really interesting, uh, the implications of that, right? Um, then, as I mentioned here, the technology was developed 20 years ago from 2017, uh, roughly 1997 by Sony. So this is another direct Sony connection for a technology, for a offshoot company. Basically, you know, it's the spider web uh, delving off from Sony. Uh, this company in particular, Mofiria, and the biometric vein authentication scanner. Really cool, okay? Moving on up from there. We have this post. A Fila, uh, let me just zoom in. A Fila Sony's uh, car will be equipped with the Qualcomm processor, which is true. Uh, who are the CEOs of BJIT, right? We got Kunitake Ando, we got Sato up here. Doesn't Qualcomm need Japan semiconductor manufacturing? That's JASM, J-A-S-M. So the only thing we're missing is the Y, right? Links to the article below. 
So it says here, you know, Sony, Honda, Fila EV will rely on Qualcomm super chip. Sony, Honda, Mobility's Fila can be personalized like a smartphone, socialized like a social media platform and make driving decisions like a human, but it won't work without the powerful microchips from tech giant Qualcomm, right? And so here's the various connections that are going on. And this kind of ties back to, um, I think it was either earlier this year or the end of last year, whenever it was that Sony did, I th it's gotta be earlier this year, 2023, they did their, uh, their big conference presentation and, and the entire thing had various connections to Qualcomm and all of us noticed this back then, but I like the way that Neo Extrix put it together here uh, in a very simplified way that kind of shows all the connections here through BJIT. Some of the partners, obviously Sony, Qualcomm, Jasmine, who's involved here with BJIT. Uh, <laughs> how far does the rabbit hole go, right? How far does it go? Uh, moving on up. Last week we did our, uh, Jasmine Spaces call uh, last Sunday. Uh, I was on there. Jasmine US was on there. JB was on there. Uh, Boy Dog Seven uh, had a lot of really good insights. Great call. Um, hadn't done one in a couple weeks, maybe three, four weeks, something like that. Got the call out there. The recording is on Twitter. So if you're on Twitter and you feel like listening to it, it's about an hour 45. Uh, we covered all the latest news. Here's a post here from Lil Bidman. Uh, Lil Bidman's been on fire lately. Tons of great posts. This one here, um, which, you know, I'll, I'll link to this as well, is a, uh, a rolling screenshot of all the various uh, Jasmine press releases, right? So anybody who's new to Jasmine, uh, really, if, if you want to know what's going on, I mean, look at all these rolling press releases. Uh, everything 2017 through 2023. Lil Bidman has it all here in this little video. Uh, for you if you want to know kind of what's what's going on with the various partners. So totally awesome. Going on up, here was another big thing. So we had this post here by Sony Japan, uh, which if we translate here, it says, the Sony store is running a VIO replacement support campaign. If you select trade-in declaration when purchasing a VIO and trade in the target laptop computer, you'll receive an additional 13,000 yen in addition to the normal assessment amount. Great. The whole point of this is that Sony, AKA Sony Japan, is still very closely tied to Vio, who is very closely tied to Jasmine in the blockchain PC, right? And we'll get to that in a minute too. <laughs> so I thought that was awesome, right? Here's a post here by Jasmine US. Jasmine will provide various technologies such as token issuance and unique blockchain technologies via its particip participation in the Natural Capital Credit Consortium, right? Per the JASME roadmap, we should be hearing some updates on the NCCC uh, development sometime in quarter three. So efforts using blockchain, this kind of just talks about how it all works in the JASME integration here with the carbon credits. Pretty awesome at all. Um, it's it's all uh, translated here through Google Lens. I think the sub JASME US did that. Um, Region distribution by voluntary market provided by platform, carbon credits, Jasmine. We got credit traceability, what it offers, improving credit circulation, prevention of double trading of credit, right? That's the whole point. So it's a green initiative uh, that Jasmine is the backbone of. Moving up. Ah, scammers, right? Scammers have been everywhere. Um, had a scammer impersonating uh, Captain Jasmine here on, on Twitter. Uh, had a scammer impersonating me. I'll get to that in a minute, but they have been out. If you ever see a scam account of mine, please, please, please report it, all right? Um, if it reaches out to you and starts asking for money and all these things, that's not me. I, I don't do that. I'll talk to you if you reach out to me, but I, I very rarely will reach out to someone, very rarely. Uh, and I'm never going to ask anybody for money, all right? So moving on up. Pure speculation. So this is uh, really cool. So Neo Extrix, um posted this video here and it says, Sony's Felica system, which is directly related to Jasmine, video explanation, right? The development dates back several years, but as they say, Rome was not built in a day. For me, Jasmine is like, and will be the mastermind of the new Japanese technological revolution. And maybe global, right? And so in this video here, they're showing basically what it's like using the Suica card uh, through Felica technology 
that grants you access into the Japanese transportation system. See, there are people using their phone um, in the same way as is basically the card, right? Simple payments, stations, facilities. Um, so right there, she's using the Suica card. Okay, very interesting. Um, you can use it at vending machines. Also, you know, in the transportation areas in Japan, you can see videos of this like on YouTube. They've got um, like little portable offices you can rent. There's like little sleeping spaces. You want to take a nap, uh, whatever you do. Um, there she is right there, just basically preloading a card that is using the um, Felica technology. And that technology was invented at Sony by uh, Tadashi Morita, who is uh, one of the um, senior members, so to speak, at uh, Jasmine. All right. So future use, taxis, cars, right, parking. Uh, you could use it at the grocery store, kind of all over the place. You could use this this card, the Suica card, right? And this was kind of what this video was based on. Now, as pure speculation, here's what I said. So imagine, and this is why I delved into a little bit on our call last week. Imagine if Jasmine, in partnership with Mafiria and the MLIT, this is basically the governing transportation body in Japan, uh, replaces the unavailable Suica card. So it's unavailable right now due to chip shortages uh, with a biometric vein authentication finger scanner. And through existing Koretsu, Jasmine acts as the backbone for data security with PDL for the entire transportation system of the country of Japan, which is over 200 million users. Now, remember, the KPI goal for Jasmine is 107 million users. So that would instantly hit 200 million. And we also know that Jasmine has, is not uh, directly a government project, but it has worked with local governments uh, multiple times throughout the history of the company. They're doing it with the Carbon Credit Consortium. Uh, they did it with the road test in Hokkaido. Uh, they will be doing it elsewhere on the smart cities front, right? So the bottom line here is uh, where this could go, uh, there's, there's a lot of room for where this could go, right? So if the card is unavailable, think of this. Um, if somebody's just using their smartphone, let's say, uh, going back to that video we watched earlier where the guy used the card, uh, what if you simply used your smartphone and then did your vein authentication with your finger and then that tied into the uh, PDL with Jasmine, right? Uh, it, it's amazing where this thing could really go from here. So I think that is a monster use case, whether it happens or not, to be determined. I do know, um, as I had mentioned here, so there's about 200 million users. And I said, uh, this post here from Hara, Japan has a very convenient IC card called Suica. So he's actually brought this up, which tells me that they were thinking about it because when he brought this up in the AMA, nobody had asked about this card. Uh, he brought up the card. He said, Jasmine also aims to provide a system where users can hold a certain amount of Jasmine coin in their wallets to lock it up, thereby improving its functionality, valuing their data, and exchanging it for value. So could Jasmine and a smartphone replace Suica for basically Suica 2.0? I think they could, right? I think they could. All right, huge insight there. Here's another post that ties back to a little bid man and a Neo Extrix here. So this is the Sagan Tosu uh, football uh, match, AKA soccer. Uh, we've got the Jasmine logo banner here uh, at the game, right? Here it is again, right there. You can see it, um, it's right here. And granted, this is probably the same banner each time, but different angles of seeing it at the game, right? So Jasmine is at the game. So thought that was funny. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, um, this is a really funny Family Guy uh, little snippet here that I got to admit, I absolutely love Family Guy. Uh, I, I want to say when Family Guy first came out, I I, I wasn't like one of the first watchers, right? It, it took a few seasons to kind of get going. And then somehow I started watching it and I just like thought it was the funniest show ever. And so anyway, in this particular clip, we got Peter Griffin here uh, singing a song to Quagmire about how he's got uh, $30,000 in credit card debt that he's never going to pay back. <laughs> so <laughs> absolutely hilarious. If you haven't seen that yet, I've got it posted here in the feed, uh, or you could find it on uh, YouTube or Fox or wherever. Um, so really, really funny, right? 
Um, here's a relevant post just about the market in general. So this is relevant to Jasmine about kind of what's happening in the current Bitcoin market. Uh, we're still trending up, right? We are still trending up. Now, I know all of us have, have sort of had our hopes dashed, you know, about 8 million times over the past two years. So um, even, even in a chart like this, I'm very hesitant to say we're going up. <laughs> but at the moment, um, things are looking okay, right? Here's a post here so from Brian, um, and this is responding to Neo x -Rix. So Japan's note blog has a ton of good info, good find. Uh, this was something that made me pump the brakes when I saw it during Jasmine in Hong Kong back in April. Um, Brian goes on to say, I asked uh, Akira, this is uh, Hara's kind of right-hand man, to clear up some of the Jasmine news that came out around that time that seemed confusing due to translation about uh, Jasmine being a national blockchain project. And what the, what the gist of this is, is, you know, Jasmine is not um, created from the government directly. Now, I have, in all the time that I've covered this, and this is going back a couple of years, um, I have sort of insinuated that I think the main idea could have come out of one of these boards that Ando is on, that is a government board. And somebody basically said, hey, that'd be a great idea. We need to do this. Who could carry it out? And he stepped up and got a team of hired guns, and that's what they've been doing ever since. I think that's how it happened. I think. I could be wrong, and obviously, Sato is a huge part of that as well. It's the two of them hand in hand did this. Um, but it is not like directly sanctioned by the government or something like that or paid for by the government. That's not what Jasmine is at all. It's, it's a private entity, but it has very close government ties and it strongly aligns with the prime minister's goals as well as the smart city goals. And you can kind of see where they sort of needed this company to be created to meet their goals, right? And that's where I think Jasmine comes in. So anyhow, really good post from Brian here. It's, there's a ton of info that Brian's always researching lots of stuff. It's all in here, uh, as well as uh, Neo Extrix, right? Now this came out. So Hara posted about this article um, that came out here. It came out on the Japan Times. And in the photo, you got uh, Kakanuma, you got Sato, and you got Hagawara, right? Um, nowhere in this article is Hara or Ando or Marita or any of these other people. Uh, but it's, it's these three main guys and the Japan times, I looked them up. They had a circulation of, I think, I think it was like 42,000, uh, members roughly, um, that it would go to it's the largest Japanese English publication. Um, and they basically, it, it was just a solid article kind of introducing and summing up Jasmine, right? I actually really liked it. I thought, you know, this is a good article. It's a good look. Um, it's consistent and it's going out in a English format. Um, and that happened this past week. So that was a really awesome article that was posted. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll, I'll put a link in the uh, description of the video. You can check that out, right? Um, as I was talking about scammers earlier, again, another scammer came out who was impersonating me. So again, report them. That's probably like the, like I said, it's like the 10th one. I mean, this seems to happen regularly. So please do not ever send money to an account that looks like mine. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to ask you for that. Um, here was something here from um, Simon Greco uh, posted this data and finance democracy. This was an article uh, for Medium that was uh, translated, I think, into English. And originally, I think it was in... Um, Japanese. And the point of that article was kind of what I wrote right here was that Jasmine collaborated with Hong Kong PC brand Avita to develop, manufacture, sell this blockchain PC. We've begun taking orders mainly from Hong Kong, focusing on South Asia and have already received over 20,000 orders. So remember, they told us by the end of this year, they'd have 200,000. That's a tall order, right? But that's what their goal is. Um, they're already at 20,000. And I know in one of the other posts here, Hara said that they're aggress aggressively targeting Indonesia after Hong Kong uh, is where they're going next. So could there be a lot more orders that come about? Yes. 
And they say, we continue our activities aiming to expand sales in Japan, the USA, and eventually worldwide. Okay, so they are looking at that. The USA tie goes back to Ken Mayera, who is in uh, Silicon Valley. And in the last AMA, Harad had mentioned that he was working uh, with a Silicon Valley company, as well as uh, trying to get some, some deals started up there for a rollout of the blockchain PC in the US. I do know there, I think there was a trip that somebody had uncovered with Sato. I can't remember if Ando was in there, but I know it was Sato and someone else. Uh, to the U.S. that Jasmine has not commented on. <laughs> and so, you know, that, that's a great thing about this community is we often find news and report on it and we get research and things done before they ever even tell us. Um, going back to DWF Labs, the new market maker for Jasmine, we knew about that a month before they ever announced it. And there's a lot of other things we know about too, right? Moving on up. Um yeah, this was kind of funny. I may as well tell this because it's kind of a joke. So uh, here in the U.S., we've got Mega Millions and Powerball that goes multiple states, right? So the jackpot can just get astronomical, but your odds of winning are like, you know, a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of 1%, right? It's nearly impossible. And so usually whenever these big jackpots come out, um, I play. And then it's always somebody in like Southern California. So somebody like Jasmine U.S. is the guy who always wins, right? It's always Southern California or it's like upstate New York in a wealthy area, something like that. And um, just so happens that this one was at $1.58 billion USD. And the person who won, won it at a Publix grocery store like 15 minutes from my house. Absolutely insane. Now, granted, I don't ever shop at that store. Um, so I probably wouldn't have won anyway if I did play. But maybe if I had done a quick pick at Publix, I could have snatched it out from under them. <laughs> but probably not, right? So anyway, the, the funny part here is that I told my wife uh, to play on her way home from work. And I said, it's $2, right? Two, two, to, two bucks. And she forgot, right? And when I later asked her about it, I was like, why didn't you play? And she's like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, you just have to go to the counter and tell them you're playing Mega Millions. It's $2, right? And I said, I need you to do it because I never carry cash. I, I just inherently don't, right? Everything I do is on a debit card, uh, something like that, right? I, I never carry cash. And so she forgot. And so then she told me that I should go out and get one after dinner. And I told her I was in for the night. <laughs> so this is just kind of like a microcosm of <laughs> irony here. Uh, all, all the way around. So I, I just thought that was really funny. <laughs> um, oh, here's a good thing. So Transcosmos PR, Transcosmos is Jasmine's big partner uh, for the teleworker. Basically, they provide call centers all around the world. And they were starting up a new office uh, that was starting with 200 seats and uh, the ability to span, expand to 400 seats. And this was in uh, Mexico City. So that just came out just the other day. So what that means for us is more users for secure PC, right? On uh, Wednesday, my good friend Dip Metaverse and Brian uh, did their uh, Wednesday phone call. Um, I didn't participate in this one. I just kind of sat back like a fly on the wall. I like to do that sometimes and uh, just, just kind of hear others' perspectives. So that was a really good call. If you want to find it, you can find it through uh, Dip Metaverse's page here on Twitter, uh, or I've got the uh, posting right here. You can just play the recording, whatever, right? Uh, moving on up from there. Yep, the U.S. is broke. We all knew that. Um, Neoextrix, the metaverse. Um, this is cool. So the metaverse that Sony will create is called Condo, right? It's like, where do I feel like I know that name? Condo. Uh, is this a tribute to Kunitake uh, Ando, Ando, right? Chairman of Jasmine. <laughs> Uh, so much he brought to Japan about innovation. Remember, he was Sony employee and ended up being CEO in the 2000s, right? Um, the way they talk about it, it sounds like maybe not, but it could be. I don't know. You know, it's it's either a coincidence or it's purposeful. And I venture to say with the Japanese that it's purposeful. I, I don't think they leave much up to coincidence, right? Um, another patent. So uh, Jasmine, new patent alert, right? Lil Bitman posted this one, acquires a new patent to create abstract information from personal data using blockchain. This is what sets Jasmine apart uh, from all these other 
blockchain projects. Um, not all of them, because some of them have patents, but Jasmine has quite a few patents already. Now, this was cool. So I, I put this out to the universe, right? This, this, this is kind of like what I do, right? So I looked at that patent and I said, huh, uh, Sato, I know him. Hagawar, I know him. Manabu Sakamoto, don't know him. Hiroshi Yasutomi, don't know. Uh, Toshikazu Mishima, don't know any of these three, right? And let me just say also that I know um, uh, DPG Maximus Max uh, here on YouTube did a video on this, so I'm not going to go into this in too much detail. Uh, he did a video uh, covering um, some of who some of these guys are. Uh, but what's really interesting is Manabu Sakamoto is the guy who created the PlayStation logo, okay? So this is a Sony tie, right? But what's interesting, and I'm I'm realizing this more and more through each of these guys is, you know, they get tied into Jasmine basically, is that they all seem to have a corporate career that starts at Sony. They do 10, 20, 30, 40, and those case, 50 years with Sony. Um, and then they break out and they start their own companies. And then they start offering services. And that's exactly what it appears to be with Manabu Sakamoto, that he may be yet another hired gun, Sony connection, direct Sony connection to PlayStation with the PlayStation logo that he is now on this latest Jasmine um, patent, right? And I said here, I remembered seeing on here where someone put the PS logo colors on the Jasmine uh, logo, right? And look at that. It's so cool. Like, like that actually looks really awesome, right? I know they can't exactly do this because it would it would be a pretty clear tie to, to PlayStation. But, you know, I think what all of us have sort of thought all along is, why couldn't you use the PDL with all of the users on PlayStation? I mean, you could. You absolutely could, right? So could this become a reality at some point? I don't know. I don't know, right? Maybe. Um, and let me say also, let me go down here too, because I saw a little Bidman posted a ton in here, right? So going to a couple of little Bidman's posts. Uh, this is a page that has a long list of Manabu Sakamoto's patents. Uh, he has patents with many companies, including Sony Interactive, Toshiba Memory, uh, Nidex, uh, Sankyo Corp, a few recent ones with Jasmine, still digging. So tons of patents here, overlapping patents. That's probably the, the way to look at this, right? Overlapping patents with major companies in Japan, right? Um, this is a link to uh, Hiroshi Yasutomi's patents, which also includes patents with Sony, right? So there's a Sony Corporation. Let me zoom that in. Let's move me out of the way. Here we go. So here's a Sony Corporation patent right there, and then here's Jasmine, right? Again, more overlap, okay? Uh, going down here, here's here's the other guy, right? Here's a list of patents from uh, Toshikazu um, Minoshima. Uh, looks like he did extensive work at Hitachi, right? Uh, so he's got Hitachi Construction Company, uh, Construction Machinery, excuse me, Company Limited, right? And then Jasmine. So again, more overlap um, from all the b biggest companies uh, in Japan. So big shout out to Lil Bidman on that one. That was totally awesome, right? Uh, moving on up, this was a awesome video. So Neo Extrix, again, uh, was, was just, has just been on fire lately. I mean, uh, he's, he's been, he's been spitting out so much here that, uh, <laughs> he's got to run out at some point, right? <laughs> uh, but this was great. This was a trans cosmos video. Okay. Now the highlight of this video for me, uh, you know, it kind of shows you some of the details, right? Like China, 32 centers, Korea, 16 South Asia, Southeast Asia, 18 centers. This is all secure PC, right? Europe, 21. Middle East, they got one. South Africa, I mean, they are global, right? Latin America, four. Uh, North America, this was 16. Now they have the this latest one, Mexico City. Uh, operation centers, 171. 52,000 professionals around the planet. I mean, that's just crazy. They are all over the place, right? Now, what I really found interesting Right here, let me see if I can just make that just a little bit bigger. Whoop. Okay. Um, right here is the first list. And though it's a little bit small, I'll kind of, you know, 
highlight the bigger ones I see, right? So um, Audi, Audi is a client with uh, Transcosmos, right? I mean, this, this whole list, I mean, these are all big companies. Epson, I mean, there's another like huge company. All these are big companies. Um, and this wasn't the first page. Look, here's another page of them, right? Canon, <laughs> Coca-Cola. I mean, come on, Sharp. Uh, Sharp is all over the place. Um, oh God, what were some of these others? I know Coca-Cola was huge. Let me see here. Denzo, Anna, Denzo, yeah, Toto. Nissan is in there. That Denzo one, that's a big one. Um, it just it just keeps going. Panasonic, HP, Vio. I mean, again, you see all the all the connections. You're like, oh, I know all these companies: Honda, Fujitsu, Fujifilm, Bridgestone. Uh, it it just goes and goes and goes in this list. I mean, holy cow! Look at all of these accounts. I mean that that is just absolutely massive. Uh, Transcosmos's footprint and. Why I always thought Transcosmos was fascinating was they were a partner of Jasmine's at the very beginning. How does a company this large partner with Jasmine, like on day one, right? How does that work? Mull that one over. <laughs> All right, moving on up. Um, we had this post came out by uh, Hara, uh, basically uh, BTC Turk Jasmine coin. Um, and ZRX were, were listed here with a BTC Turk. So I know uh, it says here, buy and sell Jasmine and OX protocol uh, with TRY, T-R-Y. That's the Turkish Lira and USDT pairs on BTC Turk. And these are some of the same pairs that are on uh, Binance US. There's one more pair, I think, that's with Bitcoin. No, not Bitcoin. It's Binance USD is the other pair, right? So there's three of them on there. Um. This is interesting. So post by Hara, and this one in particular, if we look at it, it says here, um, they also sell Vio Pro PK while offering a lower body price than the regular price. It's a model that is suitable for introduction of Web3 equipped with functions as a blockchain PC. So we've already seen Jasmine talk about Avita specifically, really, really announced it. They really made a campaign to go for it with blockchain PC. Uh, now we've got a, a shout out to Vio here with also blockchain PC, right? Little bid man. At Sony, we are developing technologies for managing our digital identities in the online and virtual worlds, thus providing excellent convenience while managing, maintaining a high level of security, Metaverse, Web3, Akashi, Jasmine. Now, you know, what was interesting was when I looked at this, um, in this little graph down here, the human, the digital identity, right? And they talk about the identifier, the credential, the profile, it goes through the cloud system, right? There's a, an authenticator, a sensor, biometrics and behavior authentication. All of this screams that Mafiria partnership. And I really think that this Sony shout out here, again, is, is like what I was saying earlier about Suica 2.0. Because you could do Suica 2.0 with a smartphone, a finger, Jasmine is the PDL. It's even the Jasmine color, you know, and that's exactly what this whole image is talking about. So that's a Sony reference posted by a little bit man, but uh, this has Jasmine written all over it, clearly. Last thing here for today. Uh, to finish today, I hadn't noticed Japan Advanced Semiconductor Manufacturing Jasm was created in November 2021, sometime after the official launch of Jasmine. Shareholder of Jasmine are TSMC, Sony, and Denso. Follow the path, always comes back to the same, right? So here, uh, Neo Extrix was saying about the TSMC, Sony, Solutions, Denso, uh, Jasmine 2021. And this is kind of how it all connects, right? You've got this JNA partners, we've got Jasmine in here, you got Apple, Toyota, Sony, um, Taiwan, 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 <laughs> semiconductor manufacturing company. Uh, we got, you know, references to Qualcomm, to Apple. You can see that brings uh, that around, right? We've got this Toyota one. Then you go back here to BJIT. BJIT is almost like the glue that sort of 
connects a lot of this stuff. If you didn't know about BJIT, you wouldn't see all these connections. But when you look at their clients and partners, Qualcomm, Sony, um, et cetera, right? Google's a partner. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. There's too much coincidence, right? I mean, there really is just too much coincidence. So anyhow, that's where we're at in today's video. So I know that was a ton of news. I tried to go through it fast, efficient. Hopefully it covered that for you. Um, I'm not really going to look at the chart today. The chart's pretty flat overall. Uh, not really a whole lot of movement yet. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that are starting to come up that would be good AMA questions. I've seen a little bid man asking a few out there. Um, you know, some other people are starting to ask some questions. So maybe we can get a, another AMA around the corner. Um, I did see the announcement of uh, that Jasmine wants to start their own Discord uh, from a previously defunct Discord that they want to start back up and basically incentivize people to go to that and there could be AMAs there. I'm a little indifferent on that one, I got to be honest. Um, so this is the Jasmine International Discord. And in this Discord, um, they have got AMA posts. They've got general, they've got all kinds of news, they've got AI bots, they've got all kinds of stuff that's in this already. And this is one of these things that I, you know, it's a bit of a head scratcher for me to be honest. Cause I look at it and I go, okay, Hara, what are you trying to accomplish here? You're saying you wanna create a discord for Jasmine people. Well, the elephant in the room is that we already have that. It's right here. Uh, who's gonna manage it, right? <laughs> Do you know how much management goes into this page? A ton, a ton of management. Uh, there are mods, obviously, you know, Fat Panda Frank, shout out to you. A big Boss Waffles, some of you guys are on here. Um, there's, there's plenty of people uh, in here that are active on a daily basis. There's nearly 5,000 members. Um, you know, one of the other things they announced too was something about how they were gonna give people OG badges for referring people to the Discord. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully it works out, right? Hopefully someone manages it. I don't really think you need to reinvent the wheel, though. Just me, personally. I mean, it's it's already right here. And I know all the hard work that uh, Tycho puts into the Jasmine International Discord, as well as the uh, Jasmine International Discord ties into the um, Jasmine Clubhouse NFTs that are in existence. And uh, depending on your NFT, you get different access here in the Jasmine International Discord. So I would just sum up this video by saying, um, I know there was a ton of information this week, a lot going on. Um, hopefully we got it all covered. And uh, if you're not on this Discord and you are on Discord, uh, by all means, check it out. If you want to try joining the new one and seeing what that's all about, um, check it out right? Um, that might be cool. I don't know. Uh, but I do know this one's already in existence and, uh, there's a lot, a lot that has been built on this. I know they were, uh, just recently, I think Tycho had posted about, um, fine tuning, um, fine tuning the bot, right? So a lot going on there. Um, but anyways, I think it's a really good page. I don't think it needs to be recreated, but that's just me, right? So that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to hit the like button. Don't forget that I am on Twitter at KIR Finance. You can find me tweeting, retweeting. I've got my uh, KIR Finance webpage. You can check that out. Got my financial blog and a few other things there. If you ever want to reach out on anything, uh, feel free to message me, leave a comment. I'd be happy to chat with you. And other than that, I will catch you on the next one. Later.